Hello, fellow Toastmasters. You have selected round two officers training pathways versus legacy programs. The purpose is to compare a sampling of offerings from the past and current Toastmasters international educational programs. You can decide if the current program pathways it has increased the value of Toastmasters educational training or if it's not worth the time to go online and use the program. We will also explore getting credit for speeches and pathways that are not derived from the set examples. <clears throat> How to get credit for a speech and uh, for a speech that you want to give, not necessarily one that Pathways has to offer. Here is our agenda for this module. So first we'll talk about what is Pathways. We'll compare vocal variety. We'll compare some pathway speeches with each other. And we'll find out where pathway speeches actually came from. And I think you'll find that particularly interesting. If you've been in Toastmasters a while, you will remember what the legacy program is. We used a paper manual with 10 speeches in it. The manual was called the Competent Communicator. It took you through some basic skills and taught you a few different types of speeches. After you completed those 10 speeches, you could add a CC after your name. On the far right, you'll see the last paper manual used, the competent communicator. Ralph Smedley created the first manual himself. That's the one on the far left. If you think about it, we really don't read the physical newspaper much anymore. We pick up our phone and read the news digitally, right? It was time to take our educational program digital too. So in Toastmasters Board of Directors 2010 strategic plan, they identified the need to modernize the communication program and renew our focus on leadership. Does anyone know what the Toastmasters International tagline is? If you said where leaders are made, you are correct. The way club meetings work would stay fundamentally the same, and the program would maintain Toastmasters' four guiding principles. Experiential learning, self-paced learning, peer evaluation, and of course, mentoring. It was decided that the new program would offer four things a clearer path toward toastmasters recognition and achievement awards greater access to educational materials expanded learning resources such as video and digital content and stronger mentoring and evaluation programs now the the uh, technical programs mentioned in competent Con communicator was recordings and uh, like a super eight millimeter camera to video your projects so they needed to update that a whole lot stronger mentoring and evaluation programs came along with the deal the new program also better prepares us for skills that we use at work different types of, of communication like blogging and podcasting and working in teams the new program, of course, was named Pathways. The Legacy program had you buy advanced manuals after you completed the Competent Communicator Manual. Each booklet had only five speeches in it, and the whole set could be shipped to you for about $75. See anything that's familiar in there? Pathways was highly touted prior to its launch in 2016. It was tested by select clubs, including here in District 11. And members called ambassadors were trained to visit clubs and teach them about using the highly acclaimed path Pathways tracks. Once the ambassadors began visiting clubs, and it seemed like it took forever, it was clear that the clubs that tested 
must have lied. It was not easy. It was not better. It was not as good to start a new member in. It was boring. It was hard, if not impossible to interact with. It took too long to load. You had to allow pop-ups and most people didn't even know how to do that. Some people didn't even know what a pop-up is. It wasn't on a mobile platform. So if you, it, if you used it on your phone to access it, it was a frozen mess. And then I had to shut down my phone and start it back up. It, it was just very unuser friendly. Unlike the legacy program, there was no competent leader manual, so there was no, no way to coerce members into serving roles or in area contests or in projects for the district because we didn't have a competent leader manual. And finally, and I'll quit now, it's just too hard for the VPE to administer. Luckily, Toastmasters invited feedback and some members thank God, were brutally honest. Toastmasters listened and slowly made changes to some of the snarls. <clears throat> so now let's talk about some of the good things about Pathways. It is digital, so it's as close as your phone. You can print the entire thing and stick it into a folder, lay it on your desk as you write your speech even. It's a lot more than speeches. Unlike the legacy manuals, it offers fun relative project, projects to learn leadership skills, far superior to the projects in the Combinant Leader Manual. Each path is actually a combination of the CC and the CL manuals, and I'll show that to you in just a few minutes. Levels one through three is communication, and levels four and five can be compared to the competent leader manuals. Toastmasters International has cleverly given us three officers to administer pathways. And thank goodness for that because it is way too much for the VP of the club to administer. Those three people are the president, the secretary, and of course, the VP of education. It's in their title. If these three officers divide the tasks, it's not a burden to administer. Just get together as a committee and decide who's going to take which part of pathways. <clears throat> Remember that, uh, oh, pathways helps us learn current skills. Uh, there's, uh, there's one called conference call etiquette in the legacy program versus online meeting basics and pathways or oh do you remember that legacy program the radio talk show compared to creating a po podcast and pathways so it's been updated for us it's hard to resist something that stayed current just imagine if we were still using ralph spendley's manual shoot 99 years ago they were all sitting around a radio listening to it, watching it like it was a television set. Do you remember using visual aids from the advanced manual technical presentations? It covered using flip charts and using the internet. Well, Pathways offers us to update our social media appearance, running an online meeting, and even creating a podcast. Now, when the Legacy Series was developed, a podcast wasn't even a word, and neither was another project called Creating a Blog. Here we go, side by side. Uh, we'll take a look now at some of the perks on both sides here. Let's take a close look at the third speech in the Legacy Manual versus the same topic in Pathways Level 3. On the left side, under objectives, you can see the words volume, pitch, rate, and quality. You see that? That can be added to a speech to affect the audience. 
On the right side, under speech profile, <clears throat> you can see volume, pitch, rate, and quality. Nothing has changed. Once the left side of the next page here in this legacy manual where it explains each category, on the right side are slides from the Pathway Level 3 speech. Now, which series explains it better? Pathways is career focused. So if you're out of the workplace, it may seem like a stretch to complete some of the suggested projects. Most members want to communicate better because of their work environment and their work requirements. How many jobs have you seen listed that you need good communication skills? <clears throat> the projects and the speeches can be adapted to any situation. For example, giving a eulogy, giving a mother of the bride speech, selling tractors, training coworkers, or even explaining how a raspberry pie works. According to MBA.com, what you're seeing in the forefront of your screen here, Communication and interpersonal competencies are still the top skills that employers are looking for. According to the survey here, 81% of recruiters identify interpersonal skills as important more than any other kind of skills. Furthermore, 57% of recruiters say interpersonal skills will grow in demand over the next five years, and 69% list strong communication skills as a reason they are confident in hiring graduates from business school. Interpersonal skills are learned when working in a team and even at your Toastmasters Club meeting. Those skills are infused in every path that's offered. Whether or not you're in a corporate club, Toastmasters International has got your back. Therefore, when talking to employers during job interviews, <clears throat> or networking engagements, it's important to think about how you describe your communication skills and how you highlight the interpersonal skills that are most re relevant. For example, in a COVID-19 environment, it's beneficial to show employers how interpersonal skills, such as empathetic communication and strong listening capabilities, have helped you better manage stress and uncertainty at school or work. Now over here on the left side is the evaluation guide from the legacy program. Compare that to the two pages over on the right side from the same speech in Pathways. Which one is more comprehensive? In Pathways, there's a bonus. We get to evaluate ourselves prior to preparing the project or speech compared to how we felt after, after reading the material, after giving the speech. If you struggle to get credit for the speech you just completed, let me share the essentials of getting credit for speeches. Number one, click through every slide, every button on every slide. I'm not saying you have to read it. I'm saying you have to click on it, right? Uh, number two, complete the before assessment. Nobody looks at it. It's for your eyes only. Give yourself all fives. Give yourself all ones. <clears throat> number three, give the speech at your club and get an evaluation. Number four, come back and complete the after assessment. Again, it's for your eyes only. And number five, go back to the transcript page and voila the check mark shows that you have completed it now here's a secret if you want to do the before and the after all in the same thing you're done just give the speech and get the evaluation right remember that one of our core values is integrity let's take a look at a couple paths and the speeches and projects in each this first one is dynamic leadership, focusing on level three. Right under the number three, you see increasing knowledge. Then you see negotiate the best outcome. That's a required speech. Then down here, you see elective projects. 
These are almost the same in every path. This isn't, these are. Uh, so in level four, you see elective projects. Here we are up here. This one is called manage change. And those are required. That's a required project. It ends up in a, as a speech in your club. Nobody manages your project, by the way, but they do hear the report that you give about doing the project. Uh, then these are your electives. It says choose one of the following. So you do this and this. Only two things are required to complete level four. It's almost the same in every project also. So these remain the same in just about every pathway. These change because they focus on something special. Down here, if you really are truly to develop work skills, then your project down at the bottom or your speech over here might be something work related. Note that uh, there are differences. And then over here in level five, of course, it does change. There's demonstrating expertise. These are the required parts. And down here is the electives that you get to choose from. Let's take a look now at this path. This is team collaboration path. And I want to draw your attention right here in level three. Here's your required one. And down here, the first one is called Connect with Storytelling. Let me go back. In this path, Active Listening is your first one. So they're not totally identical. You still have to choose two of the following. The majority of these speeches is from those advanced manuals in the Legacy Program out of 14. Did I say 14? manuals in the legacy program out of 14 you only choose two to advance to the next level easy peasy right compared to five from the advanced manuals of the legacy programs and look how interesting these are and do they sound familiar to you look at this active listening connect with storytelling connect with your audience creating effective visual aids and it's not flip charts deliver social speeches, body language, focus on the positive, inspire your audience, make connections through networking. I mean, it just goes on and on. These are so awesome, so amazing. And here we are over here in this one, same things, All right? Okay, pretty much the same things here. <clears throat> you need uh, two, three to finish three, and one, two, to finish levels four. Easy peasy. After you get through levels one and two, it's easy to keep advancing. So this is what I found most interesting as I was researching this. You may want to get out your phone and take a picture of this. If, especially if you're a Pathways doubter, you can see that there are so many titles from Pathways level three that comes from advanced manuals from the legacy program. And here's the title of the speech from that project book. I'll give you a minute, let me, let me get out of the way. <laughs> and you can take a picture of that just for your own comparison. And they've been updated. And sure, there are some that I couldn't find a replacement or a similar one for, such as, Preparing for an interview, couldn't find that. Uh, here's another one, couldn't find, write a compelling blog. <clears throat> because back when the legacy manual was written in 1980 something, uh, nobody knew what a blog was. This is updated so we can keep current and keep challenged because by now we know how to write a newspaper article or at least we've read them over and over and over again. But this is meant to challenge us and update our skills. So this is an easy comparison for you to see. And some of the projects from the High Performance Project are in here too. And then they've included some new things that aren't even mentioned in the Legacy Program. 
and that's when we get to level five. These are all new challenges for us. And something that we've done over and over is the high performance leadership. If you completed a DTM in the <coughs> legacy program, <coughs> then here it is for you to get credit for in level five. Leading in your volunteer organization is simply serving as an officer in your club. And then six months later, you <coughs> complete this one. Okay, time for me to take a water break. So let me uh, advance this for you. Oh. Did someone say, I hate pathways or using pathways is inconvenient? How inconvenient do you think it was when McDonald's started their program? Do you know they sold hamburgers for 15 cents back then? If they still sold hamburgers for 15 cents, they would not exist anymore. So renewal dues have to go up. The cost of the educational program and putting it on a digital platform costs money. So what are your renewals being used for? It's to maintain this program, this high quality program. Changes are coming, so be on the lookout. Keep checking in to Pathways for the newest updates. They are updating, and I do appreciate them for that. So let me uh, digress for a moment here. I want to talk about some learning methods that we have here. Uh, since using the internet has given us a basis for many different kinds of learning methods that we use today. But first, a word from our sponsor. It is important that you immerse your club members in using Pathways. It's not going away. It will be updated from time to time, for example, since 2020 and the start of the pandemic. Members and prospective members have been requesting content <clears throat> that will help them present themselves well, well into the digital age that we're going into. The projects in the newly updated paths focus on presenting yourself online. This will help members learn how to look and sound their best online, manage meetings in the digital space, and conduct hybrid meetings, something we're using every day now. Training can be boring, but only when instructors don't, won't, or can't change the method of instruction. As a Toastmaster, you can use any of the following ways that you see here to present your lesson. You don't always have to just get up and give a speech or read a speech, however you're doing it in your club. But you have the opportunity, because we have digital abilities now, to use some of these types of learning. There's 10 different types of training that can reach adult learners so they can learn. Successful trainers and presenters know that using one method only will bore their learner, learners and cause the appetite for their learning to be shut down. I'm using one method here. Are you bored yet? <clears throat> the methods I will cover today, and I'll go over what each one is very briefly for you. Instru Instructor-led training, e-learning, situation employee training, hands-on training, coaching or mentoring, lectures, getting enough of that, right? Uh, group discussion and activities, role playing, and then of course, case studies or other kinds of required training. I'll give you some challenges and examples of each method. When you're in pathways, you'll be able to recognize why a method is being used as well as when it is being used. For this first one, let's go back to school. Now, this is the usual way training was given when we were kids, pre-COVID. The instructor has all eyes on them and can simply stand or talk or 
they have the option to use their Toastmaster skills. Uh, maybe they could use some vocal variety, some gestures, movement across the stage, some questions, polls by raising your hands. How else? <laughs> Uh, the good thing about this is they can ask questions to find out what the group already knows and start their instruction from that point if they choose to. They can make it more informative and engaging if they do it that way. They could also hold a brainstorming session or break into groups for discussion. They can create an activity to bring home a point and focus on the benefits of teamwork. They can use a model for further understanding, for example, a model of a brain to help learners understand, understand different sections of the brain. They could use a whiteboard or slides, or maybe you had a green board or a blackboard. They could give quizzes and tests to reinforce learning. Instructor-led teaching can be enriched in many ways to enable communication of ideas from uh, my thought into your head. And it can encourage facts between the instructor and the learners through a series of questions, quizzes, or tests. Pre-COVID, even Toastmasters officers training was probably about 95% instructor-led. Led. If the instructor doesn't add that variety and enthusiasm, this kind of instruction can put you to sleep, right? The drawbacks include <clears throat> time for the student to get away from work, family activities, or other activities that they would rather be attending, and time. The instructor is getting by their employer or time they are giving up activities of their choice, if they're volunteering to teach, it, of course, as in the case of Toastmasters officers training. University instructors are paid pretty well. Professional trainers are paid even better. We have to consider that this kind of training has a financial cost to it. Have you ever been in a training session, asked a question, and the instructor didn't know the answer to your question? Not only can this be frustrating, but it limits what you can learn at that moment by the amount of knowledge that the instructor has. Finally, if we consider this method for your delivery, I'll bet most of us get up in front and use this method, right? Can I challenge you to interpret your next speech into one of the following ways that I'm gonna go through? E-learning refers to any training that takes place online, anywhere and anytime, and it can include videos, tests, activities and images in the training. The educator and the learners are separated by physical distance. It can also include augmented reality. So maybe you can bring that to life for your people. If that's something that you do at work or you're working on, and bring a headset to your club meetings and have one person try it on and you go through explaining how it works or bring your lesson to life through that augmented pair of glasses. Each person could try it on, maybe just select five people out of your audience, but it'll bring it to life. It changes it up from just being the instructor-led format. Maybe you could use your phone to make a video of just part of your speech and just show that, that part on a screen or on your laptop, or if you're doing a hybrid meeting, you can broadcast it through your laptop so all can see. Uh, you could create a test to hand out after your first paragraph. Give everyone 90 seconds to complete it. <clears throat> then resume your presentation going through the correct answers as your speech. That's really different. Or, or my last idea is, wait, isn't the method we're doing for this round of officers training? Hmm. Okay, so you could do this also. For area directors and division directors who made these videos, they are getting credit for any of the team projects and pathways. Getting together as a team, they had to research their topic, develop their topic, and then finally create their videos. 
they learned a whole bunch of stuff they didn't know they could learn about this. It really stretched their communication skills, plus they got credit and pathways for it. Did you know that 40% of the five, Fortune 500 companies use e-learning for new employees? I'll bet your company uses that, right? The e-learning industry states that 72% of companies have a district competitive advantage by using e-learning. Coursera and Udacity, does that sound familiar to you? That's totally online universities. This module is an example of e-learning, of course. Simulation training is most often provided through a computer, augmented reality, or some sort of virtual reality device. <clears throat> Despite the initial costs for producing software or technology, however, simulation training can be a necessary option for employers for employees in riskier or high stakes fields, you'll also often see simulation training for pilots or doctors, but it can be useful for other employees too. This type of training is also highly effective and reliable, allowing employees to progress consistently and most importantly, at their own pace. Augmented reality training includes both virtual reality and real world elements. I included this because some of our Toastmasters are truly technical geeks. They would be able to create their project or speech as virtual reality, something that I can't do, but I might be challenged to do it in a future path that I decide on. Hands-on training includes any experiential training that's focused on the individual needs of employees or of course your audience. It's conducted directly on the job or in our speeches directly at your Toastmasters meeting. It's showing how a person how to actually perform the task. It's learning by doing. Pathways uses experiential learning. You learn public speaking skills by giving a rehearsed, prepared speech, and you get an evaluation on the skills that you used well. You learn by doing, right? In Pathways, you form a team and complete a project. Then you give a speech and get an evaluation on the speech. You're actually leading a team. You're actually completing a project. And you're working on a team by actually being on a team. That's experiential or hands-on training. Sometimes coaching and mentoring are used interchangeably. Both agree to specific goals. Both focus on a more experienced person helping a person that has less experience and the person learns a skill that advances their protege's learning or career development if it's at work. In Toastmasters, we use coaching to help a member with a specific skill, such as how to use the speaking area effectively, maybe adding appropriate gestures or using vocal variety for a specific speech. Maybe there's somebody in your club that is really good at a certain speaking skill. You can ask that person if they'll coach you on that skill. So you prepare your speech and then you run it past them and they help you add to that whatever skill it is you're trying to learn. That's coaching. The International Coaching Federation defines coaching as, quote, a partnering with clients in a thought provoking and creative process that inspires them to maximize their personal and professional potential. A lot of P's in there. The process of coaching often unlocks previously untapped sources of imagination, productivity, and leadership. The Association for Talent Development defines mentoring as, quote, an informal association focused on building a two-way, mutually beneficial relationship for long-term career development, or in our case, speech development. 
Mentoring is done over a period of time. It could be several months or years in some cases. I still meet with my mentor these 20 years later, and he helps me improve my speaking ability. <clears throat> we use mentoring for a new member over several months. <clears throat> Maybe your club has a certain number of speeches, so you assign a mentor for three speeches. It's important that they have that agreement right up front, how long this is gonna last. And there is a mentoring path, a mentoring part that you can download and take and get credit for in Pathways. <clears throat> Shows you how to do it. So we use uh, mentoring for a new member. A member will meet the protege outside of the club to show them for example, how to access pathways, uh, what, what the meeting agenda means, maybe how to log into a role online, how to write, rehearse, and deliver their speech. This method almost guarantees retention of members because you're ingratiating them into your club. You're giving them a friend. You're giving them someone that's going to help them and approve them immediately. So if you're having trouble with retention in your club, begin a mentoring program. It works. <clears throat> they feel part of something, and it helps your new members get familiar and comfortable with the meetings and with protocol. As a club officer, you might be mentored by the member who had the office before you were elected, right? You might be a mentor to a new club member who has no idea how to navigate through pathways. We need club coaches, by the way. And if you're a member of a club who has an excited, productive meeting every time, please consider helping a club who is struggling to keep their members or who have less than eight members, or maybe they don't have any speeches being recorded in pathways. Send an email to Diane Stewart our club growth director. Her email <clears throat> is down at the bottom on the lower left. Get out your phone and take a picture and just please ask her a question on how you can become a cl club coach. It's very rewarding and we really need you. <clears throat> okay, so Lecturing is a way to get a big chunk of information out to a certain population very quickly. Thinking, think of colleges. They have lots of students, lots of information in a short period of time. Maybe it's a 90 minute class and they've got 16 chapters to cover. This works in organizations during times of crisis. During change management, according to studies, in the lecture method, about 80% of trainings are forgotten within eight weeks. Is this how you're giving your speeches? Now, can you think of an advantage of a lecture? <laughs> Neither can I. Let me ask again, is that the way you're giving your speeches? Okay, so group discussions and activities can bring learners together to solve a problem, help everyone get to know each other, and build teams. This type can be held in person or virtually, but will bring everyone together on one platform. Virtual members go to the training or in-person members join the virtual platform. Nobody goes to sleep in this type of learning or they might get called out, LOL. Use this method when you get to a level four or a level five project, or use this method all the time in a hybrid meeting. By the way, you can take pictures of any of these. If something appeals to you and you want to use it for your next speech. Role playing is a different, it's perfect inset into most types of learning to help learners see a different point of view. Using a controlled scenario is given, and learners can either self-assign or are assigned a role. After a given amount of time, 
the group discusses what they saw, how they felt, how effective one role or maybe one role player was. The role players are given the opportunity to express how they felt or how they got themselves into that role. Often the learners then switch roles or another group of learners might take on a different scenario. Next time you give a speech, throw a two minute role play into it. It will quickly pick up your audience and most importantly, it'll really help you make a point. <clears throat> now, if we were live, I would love right now to ask you all, uh, do you have any questions about this? I would have loved to have been interacting with you, getting your thoughts on it. But since we can't, send me a video or send me an email, a text, give me a phone call. My email address is toastmaster at peoplepc.com. And if you've received an email for me, you have my phone number. You can send me a video. I would love that a lot. Thank you for watching this. And make sure that you close out your screen right now so that you get credit.